In this lab, you will be using two methods, a standard addition method and a calibration curve method to determine the concentration of, qu of quinine in various solutions. You will also be determining what effects chloride and iodide ions have on the fluorescence intensity of your solutions. When you get to lab, the first thing that you should do is turn on the fluorometer. So just press the switch in the back of the instrument to turn it on. And then you'll need to wait approximately 10 minutes before you take a sample so that the lights can heat up. And then go over to the computer and log in using the administrator password and username that have been provided to you. To open the software, click on Fluorescence V35 and wait for it to load. In this experiment, you're going to be using this quartz cuvette. Before you um, put any sample into the cuvette, you are going to need to clean it. Um, the instructions are listed in the lab manual, but I'll just go through them really quickly. First, you need to soak the cuvette for 10 minutes in a 10% nitric acid bath. After 10 minutes, you need to rinse the cuvette 20 times with distilled water in the sink. And then you're going to need to rinse it five times with ethanol. And finally, to dry it, you need to use the inert nitrogen gas in the hood. There are multiple solutions that, that you are going to need to prepare. Um, there's a couple things to keep in mind when preparing the solutions. The first is that the, all of those solutions need to be prepared in these red volumetric flasks. And the second is to make sure that you dilute all of the solutions that you prepare in these red volumetric flasks with the 0.05 molar H2SO4. Again, it is very important to make sure that all of your dilutions are prepared with the, sulfuric, the diluted sulfuric acid and not with water. Otherwise, you will not obtain the results needed. Now we're ready to collect the excitation maxima of our 5.5 ppm quinine sample. So you'll fill up the cuvette at least two-thirds of the way full with 0.5 ppm quinine, and then we're ready to place it into the sample compartment. You want to make sure that the blue squares are facing the same orientation every time we take a sample. So you'll want to remove the lid and place the sample into the compartment. And then close the lid again. All right, to collect the excitation maxima, you'll want to select the M button on the toolbar and then click on spectra and choose excitation and then select next. It'll pull up this dialog box where you'll go to detectors and you want to make sure that R is unchecked and S is checked. Then go back to the monos tab and you'll want to um, set the wavelength for the excitation to 220 to 400 nanometers and then the slit width should be one nanometer and the emission wavelength should be 450 nanometers, and the slit width should also be one nanometer. After you've got the parameters all set, um, you can click Run and collect the sample. All right, so you don't have to enter a project name, so you can just select cancel. And then this is the spectrum that we um, get. So you'll want to double click the graph to do the analysis, and then maximize the window. And then you'll want to select the data reader button, and then find the maximum on the graph. So you can click around, and then use the toggle arrows to find out where the maximum is. So for the Y data, here it looks like the maximum is um, 19440. So we're going to write down the X coordinate there, which is 352 nanometers. It should be close to 350 nanometers for this. 
So after you've got this done, you're going to want to save the file. So go to File and then Save Project As, and then name it. And you'll have to save this in a public location because you logged into the administrator account and not your own Hawk ID. So you'll go to Local Disk C, Users, and then scroll down to Public. You'll select Public Documents, and then make a file folder with your name and save the um, excitation maxima in that folder. Don't forget to write down the maximum that you observed because you'll need it for the next step. So next we're going to collect the emission maxima. To do that, simply close out of your other var. And then um, select M again. Go to spectra. And this time select emission instead of excitation. And click next. And then under detectors, you're going to want to make sure the S is still checked. And back to the monos tab, we're going to need the slit width to both be one nanometer. And then the wavelength excitation is going to be the maximum that you just wrote down, so 352 nanometers for us. And then the wavelength is 350 to 600 for the emission. And after you've got that all set up, you can press run and collect the emission maxima. So after you got the reading, double click again to get to the analysis window. And then go back to the data reader tab and select the highest point and scroll over to make sure that that is indeed the highest point. And it looks like here our emission maxima is 450, which is what we would expect. So after you've got your data, you're going to want to save this file. So save project as emission maxima in the same place that you saved your excitation maxima. In, which is in the computer, um, local disk, users, public, um, and then public documents and under your folder. So after you've saved that, you need to repeat this entire process using 5 nanometer slit widths instead of 1 nanometer slit widths. After you've collected the emission and excitation maxima, you're ready to collect the blank. Go ahead and fill the cuvette with um, 0.05 molar sulfuric acid and place it into the sample compartment chamber. After that's all ready to go, you're ready to collect the sample. So go back to the M icon and then select single point this time. And under detector, make sure that both are checked. And then go back to monos. And then you're going to want to do 16 trials for the blank. So under the maximum trials um, box, you're going to put 16. And then the slit widths should both be changed to 1 nanometer. And then for the wavelength sets, you're going to want to use the um, optimized excitation and emission numbers that you just calculated. So for us, it was 352 nanometers for the excitation and 450 for the emission. After you've got all this set up, you can click Run to collect your sample. All right, so after you've got your sample, you're going to want to save this. So you can click in the box and then click Save Project As. And this will save it as a project, so you can open it up in Origin. So everything is good with that. And then you'll want to save it in the um, C disk, and then Users, back down to Public, Public Documents, and then create a folder for yourself and save it there. So there are a couple of things to keep in mind when you are adding solutions to the cubet. The first is to make sure whenever you are adding any solutions to the cuvette that you do it outside of the fluorimeter so as to not spill any solutions inside of the fluorimeter sample cell. Another thing is when you are doing the quinine sulfate solutions that you need to add all of the 5 ppm and the 50 ppm solutions to the same cuvette. So do not 
discard um, the sample solutions in that step of the procedure out between the 5 ppm and the 50 ppm. You also need to make sure that every time you add more solution into the cuvette that you just gently mix with a plastic transfer pipette and you want to make sure you always get a new plastic transfer pipette for each new um, solution addition you are adding to the cuvette. After you've placed your cuvette in the sample compartment, we're ready to collect a spectrum. So go to the M tab again and select single point again and then go to detectors make sure both of the detectors are on and then back to monos. You're going to want to select five trials for the remainder of our samples today and then the excitation to our previous optimized value which was 352 and then emission for, was 450 and make sure the slit whistler goes set to one and at that point you're ready to collect your sample so you can select run. You'll do this for the remainder of the samples following the procedure listed in the lab manual and then clean out the cuvette using the procedure described previously and repeat with the salt solutions. Cleanup for this lab experiment is fairly simple. You'll just place all of the solutions in the appropriate waste container in the hood labeled with fluorescence.